Hi guys, hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Maureen and you're watching True Gospel Talks with Maureen. So guys, in today's video, in today's episode of True Gospel Talks, we're going to be discussing how to properly share your faith with other people. It's really important we, you know, we, we get to know about these things. This video we're going to be addressing, we're going to be talking about it, what you should do and what you should not do while sharing your faith with people. Stay tuned, watch till the end. I don't want to spill everything at the beginning of this video, so okay? So let's dive in. So how to really share your faith with someone is you asking the Holy Spirit to help you. Mm -hmm. First, you have to have this in your mind before going to share your faith to someone. Have this in your mind that, okay, first, it's a command from, from Jesus Christ. We saw in the Bible, that in the book of Matthew, when he was about ascending to heaven, he then, he had to give us the instruction. He had to give us the command that, okay, since I have saved you and I have, I have all the powers, I have all the authorities right now, I have, I'm giving it back to you. And I want you to, you know, go out there and speak to people, preach the gospel with the same power, with the same authority. So first, you have to realize that it is the work of God. It is not your work. It's not something that you can wake up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to share my faith with somebody. Okay, I want to go and talk to people about Christ. No, it is the work of God. It is something supernatural. It's something divine. Okay, so Holy Spirit to help you. Now we can see that in the book of John 14, verse 26. He says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Okay? So you will see that in sharing of your faith, the Holy Spirit has a vital role to play. Number one, you have to realize that you cannot, you cannot save anyone, okay, with just your mere words. It has to, you have to have the backup of the Holy Spirit in order to save that person. So the Holy Spirit is the one that, that does the conviction, he does the conversion, and he is the one that would help the person to realize that. Okay, the judgment, he, the Holy Spirit is the one that does the judgment, the conviction, and the conversion. So it is not you. It is not you. So many people have, they have misunderstood this, this fact that, listen, you can speak the word to those people and they'll still go back and do what they are doing. So if the Holy Spirit is not there, then there, nothing would happen. You will see the person even after they are saved, they will still go back to smoking because they were not convicted of the, of the sin. So you have to, you have to, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. That's number one thing to do as a Christian who is so eager to share your faith, who wants other people to learn about this, about what Christ has done for you. So first you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the utterance. Now you will see in this book of John chapter um, 14, 26, it says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, we will teach you all things. I will remind you. Listen, <laughs> we will remind you of everything I have said to you. Now, if the Holy Spirit should, remind, should be reminding you of something, that means you have something inside of you. You have already studied the Word of God. You have already studied what Christ has said. You have already studied your Bible, knowing that... Now, this is, this is just another point now. This is another point. So, you, you've already studied your Bible, knowing that Jesus said, if you confess your sin and you believe, you shall be saved. So, the Holy Spirit is the one that will then remind you, why you are speaking to the person, why you are talking to the person, the Holy Spirit is the one to remind you of the things you read. That is why it's important as a Christian that you study your Bible. It's important as a Christian you study your Bible and know what the Bible is saying, know what the Lord is saying, because God can actually speak to you through the Word of God. 
God can speak to you through the word of God. So it's important that you as a Christian always study. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Always study the Bible. Let your Bible be close to you. Let the word of God not depart from you. Okay? So, now, the first step in sharing your faith is ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask him for guidance. And then the second part, the second part is you studying the word of God. Like, you know, the Bible says that the word of God is like water that cleanses you. It washes you. It takes away all this, all those, all those things, all those too much baggage. That's what the word of God does to you. It removes it from you. It's, it's literally like a map. It's a map. Okay. A map that will show you how to live your life. Things you should do. Things you should say. Like literally everything happened on this planet. It's in the word of God. It's in the word. So even when you are going to challenges, when you are going to storms, when things are not going the way you want it to go, when you are experiencing, you know, trials, temptations, the word of God is a go-to. The word of God. You know what the word says. So, so you have to use the ministry of the word of God. It's really important that you as a Christian, as a believer, that you know the word. Before you go out there to preach, before you go, go out there to share your faith, because you might meet someone that was once in church and then maybe church did something to the person and then the person stopped coming to church. You might meet people that they are, they are hurt, they, are, they have been going through things, or you might, you might meet um, someone that they are, they are, their mind is made up, okay, that there is no God. So this is the reason, this is the reason why you have to have the word of God in you. This is the number two point on preparing yourself. Listen, you cannot give what you don't have. I repeat, you cannot give what you don't have. So if you are going to share the word of God with someone, you yourself, you have to be prepared. You have to start from you. Start from yourself. Start from yourself. So that will lead me to the next point. Number three, the third point is live by example. Guys, 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 you have to live by example. You have to live by example. If you're not living by example, then how would you win that soul? How is that? Listen, it's not only when you're in church that you'll be holy. It's not only when you're in church that you be, yeah, <clears throat> that you live a holy life. I know what the Bible says in, says in the book of James. So the Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 22, it says, Do not only listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Instead, do what it says. Okay. So it says, anyone, in verse 23, it says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at the mirror and forgets how he looks once he goes away. Okay, so this scripture is trying to tell us that why you are about to, I mean, it's a kind of something you can do in your everyday life, okay? Why you are out there preaching the gospel, maybe trying to convert someone, or I'm trying to talk to somebody, make sure you are living by example. Make sure you are living by example. You have to live up to what you are telling people about. You have to live up to what you are preaching. You don't have to just be a preacher of, of this word and you're not living up to it. You, you only call yourself a hypocrite if you're doing that. So in order for you to be able to communicate this word, because you cannot give to people what you don't have. You cannot give out what you don't have. So, therefore, you have to live by example. It says, don't just listen to this word. Don't just preach it. Don't just talk about this word. You have to live by it. You know, there are so many people today, they, are, they led the church because of what one or two Christians did to them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just... This that's the purpose of this channel. We just discuss this. This is a place where we can, you know, talk about the Christian lifestyle, how you're meant to live your life as a Christian. Okay. 
That is why we, we have this channel, this platform, True Gospel Talks. We talk about why you have to live, the way you have to live as a Christian. It's really important. So there are certain Christians today that their life has, has chased a lot of people in way. Their life has pushed a lot of people away from the church. So of them are gossipers. They can gossip. Listen, <laughs> what I'm saying is these people, they know how to gossip. They know how to gossip. After church, they will go to Sister Benif's place. They will go to Sister Esther's place. They will talk about Brother uh, Stephen. Talk about Sister Joanna. Talk about this one. You know, different, different things. And at the end of the day, they have to say, uh-uh. are you sure this person is really a Christian? As children of God, you're, you're, you're as someone that, <laughs> someone that is interested in any souls, you have to first of all remove the things in your eyes. Before going out to speak to someone, someone else, or maybe to talk to somebody else, or before trying to remove the one in the eyes of the other person. That's the way it works. Now, these are the fundamental things you have to do to yourself before you go out there to put yourself out there to share the word with someone. Before you go out there to share the word with someone. These are the fundamental things you have to do. Number one, you have to ask the Holy Spirit for help. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask Him to help you, teach you. Makes you a better believer. Make you, like, let him help your life. Ask him to help you. Secondly, you have to learn how to study the word of God. Even prayer. Prayer is also important. Learn to study the word of God. Learn how to pray. Learn to study the word of God. I'm coming to that prayer aspect first. I'm coming to it. Learn how to study the word of God. I think it asks the Holy Spirit for help, for help because the Bible says the Holy Ghost is the one that will teach you all things. He is the one that will teach you everything. All things, okay? So, if you study the word of God, the Holy Spirit will start breaking it down for you, teaching you what the word actually says, and that will help you live a better life as a Christian. Thirdly, you have to lead by example. The words you have read, the words you have studied, the messages you have listened to, or even the words you have preached, as a child of God, you have to live by example. You have to live by example <laughs> it's really important i know i'm i'm sounding this one like living by example because many many so many christians have missed it so many have left the church because of this you have to live by example the fourth point is you have to be an intercessor oh god <laughs> see it's not just all about Wanting to shit, put yourself out there, or maybe climb the pulpit. That is why you see many people have missed it. Many have missed it because they're trying to do it, doing the, the work of God with their own mind, with their own initiating, not asking the Holy Spirit to give it, allowing allowing the Holy Spirit to do His work because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one that will do the work of God, not you. Okay, so you have to pray. Learn how there are so many pastors that don't even pray. There are so many believers. They don't know how to pray. They are not even praying. So many Christians, they don't, they can't pray. They cannot last for at least one hour in prayer. They can't. So you have to learn how to pray. Or even 30 minutes. They can't. Learn how to pray. It's really important. It will help your journey with Christ. It will help you. Prayer is something that I love prayer. I love prayer so much. And I do pray. I do pray. My husband will be my witness. I love prayer and I do pray. So prayer is what will open heaven for you. Prayer is what will open you up. It will open you up. Okay? It will show you what is in God's heart. At that point, at that season, it will show you who to talk to. It will show you who God is leading you to talk to, to speak to. So prayer is like an antenna that will connect you to God and God to you. You know, you'll be connected. So as a Christian, once you start this, journey of going out to share your faith you have to learn to pray pray praying it you, you are praying against territorial attacks because they will come at you you're trying to cross their territory so you are praying against those things you are trying to equip yourself equip yourself so that even as you share after sharing the word of god they will not come back at you because definitely they will come back at you. 
So that's why you have to equip yourself. So these are the fundamental things you have to do. Prayer before you go and prayer when you come back. Prayer before you go out to preach and prayer when you come back. Or prayer before you speak to that person and prayer when you're not speaking to the person. It works together. Okay? So you have to pray. After, pr- after you, you have that word of prayer, what the Holy Spirit lays in your spirit, just pick it up. Go out, preach. If it's to preach publicly, if it's to speak to somebody at your place of work, if it's at school, anywhere you find yourself, just speak. Even if it's at the church, before you um, 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 start a sermon to preach the gospel, even in the church, pray as a pastor, as a minister, as a singer, anything you are doing, as a child of God, pray because prayer is essential. It's important. Okay? Number five, sharing the gospel. Then this is the part. Okay? This is the part. Now, the do's and don'ts in this number five now is while you are sharing the gospel, do not condemn them. Don't condemn anyone. So, John cha- now let's look at John chapter 3, verse 16 to 9, no, to 21. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, we like we all know, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only soul, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Now listen, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only soul. Verse 19, and the judgment is based on the fact that God's light came into the world, but people love darkness more than light. Uh, for their actions, we are evil. And all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it. For fear of sin will be, for fear of their sin will be exposed. But those who do, who do what is right come to the light so that others can see so that others can see that they are doing what God wants. Okay, now you will see that the Bible says here in verse 16 and 17 that for God so loved this world that he gave his only son that whosoever that believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It then says in verse 17 that God, God sent his son into the world not to judge but that the world will be saved through him. But so what you have to do, the way you have to approach them is you approach them with love. Okay, you have compassion because if you don't have compassion, you cannot actually win souls. If you don't have com- compassion for these people, you cannot win them over. I have seen many preachers that they came out there, you know, condemning them, telling them you will go to hell, you will go to hell for this if you are this, if you are uh, a drunkard, if you are homosexual, if you are that one, that one, you will go to hell. You know, a lot of people have come out saying this is, and it's quite interesting. Uh, and it's quite interesting because you will see that these preachers, they're trying to do it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying their best. And what they're saying is the truth. But there is a way you would speak this word to people and then you will bring them and you actually, they will actually be saved. Yeah, they will actually be saved. Now, when Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ, he didn't just come and Jesus Christ told him, okay, uh, just saw him and told him, you will go to hellfire if you know. If you not give up everything or when if you if you're not born of the water, no. He came to him after he came to Jesus. Not before. He came to Jesus and asked him, What sh- what would I do for me to be saved? What would I do to inherit this kingdom? What can I do? In this same John 3 16. Go and read the Bible. You see, Jesus told him, Now this is what you do. In order to have this life. Enough for you to have the light of God in you. 
you have to be born again. You have to be born of the water, born of the spirit. No, this is another sermon for another day. Okay, another topic for another day. So this was what Jesus Christ told Nicodemus. He didn't just tell him before he asked, you will go to hell, you will go to this one, that one. No. Because the mission, his mission is for these people to be saved. So your mission as a gospel preacher, as a preacher, is for them to be saved, not to condemn the person, not to condemn the person in the act. It's for them to be saved. Okay? So when you go out there to preach the word of God, you speak to them about the love of the Father. You speak to them about how much God loves them. You speak to them about the sacrifice that God paid. You speak to them about their situation because most of them might be going through stuff. It might be something that made them to go into that kind of sin. It might be something that pushed them into that kind of a thing. So you, you, you talk to them about the reasons why they should, they should believe, you know, whatsoever thing that they know that um, they have put their hands into reason why not really mentioning the name of the thing not even mentioning the name of the thing okay so that they will not feel condemned and they will not feel judged then you will let the holy spirit to then do the conviction now the holy spirit is not the one that will trouble their hand because you have planted the seed the holy spirit is not going to tell, trouble them do not ask you do not ask you so now that you have preached to me about the love of the father what can i then do what should i do then that is why we will not tell them, listen, for you to experience this love, for you to really, you know, because the love is already out there and God has already given us the love. But many people, their heart is closed to receiving the love of God. So for you to receive this love, you have to give up this thing. You have to open your heart. So that is then when you mention the sin. If the person is a homosexual, you tell the person, this thing is a sin, so you have to give it up in order for you to experience that love. If you still have that in you, you can't experience it. But the love is there, but you cannot experience it. So if the person is a thief, you tell the person, in order for you to experience the love of God, you have to give up stealing because it's against the word of God. So you see how you come, how, the, you see the, the way you you preach it, the way you speak to them. So with that way, you are just like you are a, a um a marketing uh manager, or let's say um yeah, just like you are you are you are a, a, a marketer, okay? You are out there, you are an ambassador of a of a company, you are trying to sell a product. You will not start by telling them if you don't buy this product, you you will be this, you will die. No, you don't just start there. Or maybe if you don't if you don't buy this product, you will no longer be called whatever your, your name is. No. So what you do is you give them the advantage. Tell them this 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 is what will happen. This is the love that God has given to you. This is why God has sent me to speak to you. This is why you have to accept Christ in your life. Because God did not create because some of them will tell you, How can a God who you say love me would then send me to hell. Now, this is the question you would then tell them. This is the sorry, this is the answer you would then tell them. You would tell them that God did not create hell for anyone. God did not create hell for his creation. He did not create hellfire for us. He created hell for the devil and his and his angels. So it is then our sin that is pushing us to hell, not to God. Is our sin that is pushing us to hell. So what God is trying to do is to save us from hell. Is to save us because the law has been placed there. Just like the law of a country, the law has been placed there. It can't be reversed. God has already set the standard for us. So if you are not living up to that standard, then sorry, you have to go you have to go with the devil because that's the path you choose. It's just like a choice. Okay? So, lastly, 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 you have to um, make sure you allow the Holy Spirit to 
lead you in all these things. Allow him to give you the word to speak. So um, if you are speaking to them one-on-one, -on -one, you have to, you know, calm yourself down. Don't be angry because most of, some of them likely want to make you angry. Don't be angry. Number one, you have to be slow in, be quick in listening, slow to speaking, and um, slow to anger, okay? I've seen many Christians, they're trying to defend their faith and then this they start fighting. No, do not fight. Yeah, it's okay for them to misunderstand us, but don't fight. Just do the correction. Tell them what you need to tell them. And then allow the Holy Spirit to lead you on what you're even saying. And what the Holy Spirit do is work. Okay? So thank you so much for watching. And this is all I have for you. In conclusion, and to summarize anything, now we, we talked about how to share your faith with others. And we said, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Be a student of the Word of God. Live by example. Live by example. Pray for them before and after the preaching or sharing of the word. Pray for them. Number five, do not condemn these people. Do not condemn for them. Intercede for them. Don't condemn them while you are preaching the word. So these are the five things. And don't be angry. <laughs> don't be angry. These are bonus. Don't be angry. Be slow to if, you're, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, don't be angry. Be slow to speak. Because when you are slow to speak, the only ghost will be giving you more inspiration. Be slow to speak. Be quick to listen. Listen to them. And be slow to anger. Okay? So God bless you. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Maureen and your host. So if you like this video, I would urge you to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Okay? Share it. Click on that subscribe button right there. God bless you. Thank you for watching.